Raider Nation, it's your boy Raider Alex back with you another video for you guys. Anybody that is new to the channel and you guys love Raiders related content like this, make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. That being said, let's jump right into it. The Las Vegas Raiders offseason has officially begun and there are several players whose contracts have expired and I think it would be wise for the Raiders to negotiate and bring these players back for the 2023 NFL season. Without further ado, let's jump right into the list. At number one, this is going to be the most obvious guy, Josh Jacobs. Former first round pick from the then Oakland Raiders, Josh Jacobs contract has officially expired and he is due for a contract. Remember last offseason the Raiders declined his fifth year option. Overall, I think Josh Jacobs has turned out to be a good pick for the Raiders and he's coming off of a career year for the silver and black. Josh Jacobs led the entire National Football League in rushing yards with 1,653 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns. Now, this will be the most difficult guy on this list to secure just due to the fact that he's going to demand the biggest contract out of all of our free agents. With Jacobs, the one thing we have to be cautious of is not overpaying him and the Raiders need to negotiate the contract in a way that provides them flexibility in future years if Jacobs' production begins to fall. We do not want to be in a situation like the Dallas Cowboys who currently have Ezekiel Elliott, a guy whose production has declined. And now the Cowboys are stuck over paying for a running back in Ezekiel Elliott. The Raiders need to do everything they can to try and stop Josh Jacobs from hitting the open market because once he does, there is no guarantee Jacobs will come back to the Raiders. Once you hit the open market, there may be a team who is willing to make him the highest paid running back in the league at that point. At that point, I don't think Josh Jacobs would turn down that offer. Really, in a worst case scenario, I think the Raiders need to franchise tag Josh Jacobs. Even though he wants a long-term deal, at the end of the day, it's a business move. And if the Raiders are forced to use the tag to ensure that Jacobs will be under contract for at least one more year, I think we will have to do that. Ideally though, I think Dave Ziegler would draw up some type of contract that gives him a fair amount of guaranteed money up front, potentially giving him a base salary of around 12 to 14 million dollars per year and potentially putting in some incentives in his contracts if he hits certain metrics which i would not mind which would allow him to make even more money if he continues to perform like he is doing at this point because when it comes to josh jacobs and running backs in general look i'm 100 percent willing to pay jacobs up to 14 million dollars per year but he has to continue to produce all pro numbers and stay healthy like he has been doing this season so Josh Jacobs should be the priority in terms of re-signings in this offseason. The second guy on this list, middle linebacker Denzel Perryman. This year was a big year for Denzel Perryman coming into a new defensive scheme under Patrick Graham. Perryman really excelled under his former defensive coordinator Gus Bradley's system last year. So we were not sure whether or not Perryman would really fit this system. Overall, Denzel Perryman, he's not an every down linebacker for us as he does tend to struggle in pass coverage despite him having two interceptions this season. But I absolutely love his ability to quickly diagnose plays and stop the run. I really noticed that Perryman provided a different type of intensity when he was available for us and he should be a free agent who shouldn't cost us too much money and he will be a much needed depth for this linebacker core that is really thin at the moment and that really needs to be revamped as soon as possible in this offseason. I think you can get Denzel Perryman for around the range of $5 million per year and if his market value is anywhere close to this figure, I think it would be wise for the Raiders to bring him back. But this is definitely a guy you should not overpay as he is one dimensional for the most part. Now the third guy on this list, wide receiver Mac Hollins. Wide receiver Matt Collins has really surprised me this season with his production. Before the season started, I did not think he was going to get a lot of playing time or potentially he would get released before the season started, but Matt Collins, for the most part, did a good job solidifying himself as a clear number two wide receiver on the outside. Matt Collins' 2022 stats were 57 receptions, 690 yards, and four touchdowns. I don't think Matt Collins will cost us too much money to bring back as well. And I also loved his contribution to special teams this year. The only main issue I really saw with Matt Collins is several different times during the season. It seemed like he was confused with the play calls and it seemed like he hadn't fully memorized the playbook. 
that should be fixed with another full offseason under his belt in this offense, in this playbook. But number three, I would bring back Mac Hollins. The fourth guy on this list is cornerback Rock Yassin. Rock Yassin was really the bright spot for the majority of the season at the cornerback position, which at the same time wasn't really saying anything special since our cornerback position I felt was really one of the one of the weak links of this defense where we had to rely heavily on some undrafted free agents to step up due to injuries. And with cornerback Anthony Averett, another free agent signing who severely underperformed this season. But overall, I did love Rock Yassin's physicality, his ability to make tackles, and he can be sticky in man coverage. Ideally for me though, Rocky Sin would be a very good number two cornerback. He is not an elite number one shutdown corner, so if the Raiders are going into next season with Rocky Sin as our number one, we are in trouble. But regardless, I still think he's a good cornerback. I would like to bring him back ideally as a number two option. The Raiders are still in need for a true number one cornerback in order to really take this defense to another level. Now the fifth guy on this list, Deron Harmon, safety. Last but not least, safety Deron Harmon is definitely a player that we need to bring back next year. He was really the bright spot for the secondary and he looked like a true leader of the secondary group and he knows the playbook. I believe Deron Harmon is a guy who is completely bought into the new culture that this regime is building and trying to instill for this football team moving forward. You need guys with character and experience on your roster and I think Deron Harmon provides both of these. He is getting a little bit up there in age, going to be 29 next season, but his knowledge and leadership is enough for me to keep him around in this locker room, especially with the lack of development that we would have liked to have seen from our young safety Trayvon Merrick. But at the same time, don't get it twisted. He is no slouch. Deron Harmon that is, he was still able to record two interceptions, one of which was a pick six and two forced fumbles on this season. This is also a guy who should not command very much money. He was getting paid a little bit more than a million dollars last year. I think anything from two to three and a half million dollars should do the trick for Deron Harmon. I think he would love to be back on this team next season. Fifth guy on this list is Deron Harmon. And also I'm just going to mention another guy who's going to be an honorable mention for me. And this is going to be running back Amir Abdullah. Really, I thought this guy was really underused for the most part this season. I love his versatility, his skill set. And as I said, I think he was really underused, especially catching the ball out of the backfield and in the special team. But we will ultimately see if he is brought back next season. But Raider Nation, let me know, did I miss any player that we should absolutely bring back, re-sign next season? Let me know in the comment section down below. That being said, Raider Nation, that is all I have for you guys in today's video. Anybody that is new to the channel, you guys love Raiders related content just like this. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.